The Binion Scholars Program is a project through the Binion Center in which a student partners with a faculty mentor and a community partner in which they're trying to find a community identified need and then solve that need by creating their project around it. And honestly, this project can be based upon anything that they're passionate about. It's really subjective to each student. So you can basically go whichever way that you want to go. It is just trying to identify that need and then try and create a sustainable program that will stick with that need and continue on in the t into the future. I, For my capstone project, I focused my entire project on the aspect of music and how it can be used for healing. So I was working up at the Huntsman Cancer Institute as a research assistant and I noticed that a lot of the times cancer patients are going through a lot of chemotherapy or different physical treatments that kind of, you know, drain the energy out of them. I kind of started thinking to myself, like, what is something that helps me kind of de-stress and bring my mind to a more positive mindset? And for me, that has always been music. I've always been involved with music since I was a little kid, whether it was singing or playing instruments. And so that's always what I looked forward to when it came to de-stressing or, you know, not being so anxious and nervous all the time. And so I wanted to then use that um, background and experience of mine and turn it into my project. And so I partnered with Hope Lodge, and that's my community partner. And um, my faculty mentor is a professor in medicinal chemistry. So he has done a lot of research in music therapy and how that can be used to release um, you know, anxiety or provide pain relief for patients with chronic low back pain or, or chronic illnesses in general. And so having that research side along with the actual volunteering side, um, I was able to put that together and the project is called Harmonic Healing. So using music as a means to heal for cancer patients at Hope Lodge. The requirements for the Binion Scholars Program is obviously one to have a community partner and faculty mentor. Um, and then you have to have a total of 300 service hours. So 100 of those go towards your actual capstone project and then the other 200 hours go towards any other extra volunteer work that you're doing kind of outside your capstone um, and then you have to have nine credits of the class as well um, and you kind of take those throughout your undergrad classes you can kind of fit them in depending upon whatever year um, you're in or whatever space that you have open within that as well. I chose my community partner based upon the population that I wanted to serve so after volunteering um, and also doing research at the Huntsman Cancer Institute I realized that I wanted to work with cancer patients but after um, contacting the staff at the Benyon Center they were able to connect me with um, Amy who is the manager at Hope Lodge which is through the American Cancer Society and Hope Lodge is basically a residentiary for cancer patients to reside in while they're receiving treatment at the Huntsman Hospital um, and it just is a little place where they can stay for free actually um, while they're receiving their treatment so that's kind of how I picked um, who I wanted to work with, but um, yeah, it was a little bit of a struggle in the beginning, but we got, we got through it and I was able to kind of hone down on who I wanted to work with that way. In order to pick who my faculty mentor was, I definitely had to do a little bit more research on that side. I knew that I kind of understood the clinical aspect of um, cancer and how patients were being affected by that when I was doing research up at the Huntsman, but I wanted to have somebody who was really focused on using music therapy for pain relief in patients. And so I did a lot of research and searching up, um, you know, physicians or um, professors who did, who had a lot of their research focused around um, alternative medications for pain relief. And I came across um, my faculty mentor who is the professor of medicinal chemistry up at the pharmacy building. And he had a lot of experience based on um, music therapy for chronic pain, chronic illnesses. He'd done a lot of publications on that too. Um, a lot of clinical trials he has completed from there um, as well. So I basically just emailed and kind of, it was a shot in the dark hoping that he would respond back to me. But I found a few different professors, so I emailed a few of them to try and see who would respond. And um, Greg ended up responding and he was really, really excited to meet with me. And so I kind of met with him that way and we kind of focused on the more research aspect and that more biological aspect of how music therapy works for um, patients and in general, but also cancer patients specifically. I would definitely have to say my community partner and faculty mentor have assisted me in so many different ways. They have been so, so supportive. So I'm so grateful to have had them on this journey. And I think the biggest way that they, you know, number one is continue, like they continuously provided like reassurance, like, hey, it was gonna be okay. We'll figure it out, we'll get through it. Cause I know there were a few times I got worried. I was like, I really wanna complete the project. I wanna make it sustainable. And I'm so worried that it won't be, but they were very, 
um, helpful and being like, no, it's gonna be fine. Let's just figure out a way to do it. But having a community partner and a faculty mentor who were so supportive really allowed me to kind of continue and stay resilient throughout that process. And so I know sometimes it can be really, really hard to keep that positive mindset going, but it is so, so important because now we're here and you know we're able to kind of get everything back into order and back in person and it was so worth it even though there were a lot of ups and downs so positive mindset and being resilient because you're gonna have a lot of ups and downs but it's worth it in the end i say that other faculty should become a Benyon scholar mentor um, is because you really get to see from a very personal and close um, proximity and view um, how a student really chooses to navigate throughout a certain project. So there could be a certain topic that a faculty is very interested in. Um, and being able to work with a student one-on-one -on -one really gives you that opportunity and experience to see how something works um, on a very close-up level. A lot of times there'll be multiple students doing you know, larger things in bigger groups and maybe a faculty mentor would be like overseeing that. But really getting that one-on-one -on -one experience I think is really awesome when you get to be a faculty mentor because you get to really see you know, the, the, the challenges that a student goes through. Um, you also get to kind of help navigate them and mentor them on what they're going through. Um, but you also get to be a part of something that maybe you are so passionate about and you love on such a close level. My number one advice for faculty working with Binion Scholars is actually something that I learned from my faculty mentor that I absolutely, absolutely loved as a student. And that was really allowing the student to kind of navigate their project, but you being there to support them every step of the way, which was a really great part um, with both Greg and Amy, who were my faculty mentor and community partner. Um, they really let me kind of navigate that on my own. And then every step of the way, they supported and guided me if I got stuck on certain things um, in certain situations. So the biggest thing is kind of let the student navigate it, but let them know that you're there for them no matter what happens and that you can provide them with any guidance and support that they need. But that project is kind of, you know, their own that they can kind of personalize in a way, but also have you there to support them. So after a little time of trying to find different donors and things like that, I was like, I'm out of options. I don't know what to do. So I ended up reaching out to Amy, who then was like, you should have come to me earlier because she connected me with the Hope Lodge's um, charity fundraiser website where I was able to paste a list of all the instruments that I needed. And within a few months, somebody had actually bought all the instruments and I had everything that I needed within, you know, 10 minutes of a time rather than putting together an entire fundraiser. So the next thing for me right now is after graduating just this past semester, I'll be continuing um, my education at the University of Utah School of Medicine. And I'm actually hoping to continue working with Hope Lodge. Um, and then not only having that music program here within um, the center, but trying and expanding it to other communities as well. I'm also very passionate about working with um, rural communities or underserved populations. And I know mental health can be a huge, um, problem there as well sometimes because they don't receive that um, aspect of healing and so being able to take the program that I create here at Hope Lodge to other underserved populations and communities will allow me to kind of expand that to other populations and then really hope um, to see that that difference within those communities as well and make that difference with other communities so I would love to kind of expand the program with other populations and um, see how the program works with other individuals as well. The biggest advice I would give to students completing the Binion Scholars program is, first of all, you know, do what you're passionate about. That's the number one thing. This is something that's going to take, you know, a few, it takes a few years to complete. You have to put in a lot of time into it, obviously. And so it definitely comes down to do something that you're actually passionate about and that you really want to continue doing. The best part is like you can, even after you graduate, you can continue, you know, volunteering there, being a part of it, being involved. That also opens more doors to other opportunities um, or, you know, doing something else in that aspect as well. But number one thing is pick something that you are legitimately passionate about rather than just doing it for maybe like a qualification or something like that. Really pick it because you love it. Um, and number two, the biggest thing I kind of mentioned this before was, you know, remaining resilient. Um, yeah, you go through a lot of ups and downs, a little bit here and there, but the biggest thing is stay strong. It really is worth it in the end. And I'm sure you're going to love every part of it, every aspect of it, whether it's good or bad. Um, but in the end, it's definitely worth it. So yeah, stay strong, stay resilient and just keep moving forward.